Season's greetings to our streaming family. We are so thrilled to have you with us on today. This is the first Sunday in December, and you know what that means. That means that we have the opportunity to not only have a streaming service, but we have the chance to come together in person on the property. Yes, it is first Sunday. At 11 a.m., we will have our monthly drive-in service, in-person service live band, live praise and worship. Pastor has a message that is totally different from the message that we have on stream. It is finally here another first Sunday. Also, with it being first Sunday, that means OBF kids have an opportunity to come together in person. And you know what? I found out that this first Sunday, the first Sunday in December, OBF kids will have a happy birthday Jesus party. That means parents, you need to wake the kids up, say, oh no, you have got to go in person because you don't want to miss the happy birthday Jesus party. And so we are so thrilled to have all of you, family, family and friends with us on this streaming service, but soon at 11 o'clock in person, don't miss it. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne in the name of Jesus thanking you for giving us the honor and privilege of having another day of life, breath, health, and strength. I pray, Lord God, that you will help us to be attentive through this service. I pray that you help us to be worshipful during this service and be prepared, Lord God. We rebuke all distractions that will take us away from this time with you and the special word that you have for us. Pastor is starting a brand new series that helps us focus on the importance of the holidays and how we should celebrate the holidays and not go in seasons of grief and depression during this holiday season. So I pray, Lord God, that you will be with us, strengthen us, bless us, but help us to receive this word so we can go out and do kingdom business, go out and bless others. And we thank you and praise you for another one of your magnificent days. In Jesus name, amen. Now your part is wake up family members and friends, call them, text them, tell them it's time to go to streaming service. And then those who are in our area, we love to have you in our drive-in service. So I want you to be blessed. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want you to go ahead. Let's give God an amazing praise simply for being awesome. Have you ever just stood in awe of who God was? Well, I believe as we lift him up, we will find ourselves standing in awe of his great name. So God, we bless you today. Come on, clap those hands right here. Song says this. Our God is an awesome God. Hey. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Oh God, you reign. Oh yeah. We're gonna do this thing together. One voice, everybody say our God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns hey. forever and ever. Say our God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns Sing it again, our God. Our God is an awesome God. Hey. He reigns forever hey. and ever. Our God. Our God That's is an right. Awesome God. He reigns. He reigns hey. forever and ever. Say forever and now, forever and ever. Everybody, I love you. 
Dancing on some gaudy reins From heaven above with with Some power and love My God is an awesome God Everybody say God is an awesome God He reigns hey, from heaven above Let's go Some power and love My God is an awesome God Our God is an awesome God is awesome so God we lift up your name we give you glory somebody I dare you just to begin walking around in victory <laughs> walking the Bible says he orders our steps <laughs> the steps of a righteous good men are ordered by the Lord it says this by the hand of the Almighty I've been set free heal deliver and make complete now I'm walking in victory Let's sing that one more time by the hand of the Almighty I've been set free, he'll deliver and make complete. Now I'm walking in victory. One voice, everybody say, by the hand of the all. By the hand of the all. It was only by his hand. Free, hey. He'll deliver. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Now I'm walking in victory. I want you to make that declaration. By the hand of the all. By the hand of hey. the all. It was only by his I hand. Set free, he'll deliver and make complete. Yes, Lord. Now we gonna sweep that up. Say, by the hand of the young, by the hand of the young. Hey, I've been set free. It was only by his hand. By the hand of the 
of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now, now I'm walking in victory. It was only by His hand, by the hand of the, the hand of the Almighty. I've been set free, healed, healed delivered, made complete. Now, now, now I'm walking in believe that I need you to lift up a praise because who the sun sets free is free indeed and the Bible says it's not by power nor by might but it's by the Spirit of the Lord it was only by his hand that we're free that we're walking no more chains holding us no more chains holding our minds it was only by his hand and now we're free to worship in his presence Come on, if God sets you free and you're walking in victory, I just dare you just to lift up a free worship right here. Come on, a worship that says, God, only you satisfy me. Now that I'm free, I'm only satisfied by you. The Bible says you satisfy our soul with good things. Hey, we're only satisfied by you. Come on, take a few moments and just be satisfied in the presence of the Lord. For in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Only you can satisfy my heart. Only you can satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy my heart. Jesus, yeah, Jesus. One voice, only you. Only you can satisfy my heart. This heart belongs to you, God. Can you make that declaration, my soul? Only you. Oh, oh, oh. Say Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The verse says this. Here's our testimony. If I take what the world will offer, then I'll have to come again, again and again. Oh, but with one drink of his living water, hey, I'll never thirst again. Yeah, I'll never thirst again. Only you, only you can satisfy my heart. My heart. Only you, only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy, Only you can satisfy by my Jesus. Jesus, big.
Jesus on your side and he's and he's the only one who satisfies you not your past not the world not sin but if you're satisfied with Jesus somebody give God the glory I'm satisfied with you hey I'm satisfied with you
Overcoming by Faith Ministries will be hosting another COVID vaccination clinic. Shots will be administered by CORE, Community Organized Relief Effort, providing vaccinations of Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer. This event is free and open to the public, taking place Friday, December 10th from 12 p.m. until 5 p.m. in the Overcoming by Faith Sanctuary. Also, if you can't make this date, the next opportunity will be January 7th from 12 until 5 p.m. Watching TV and this commercial came on. You've seen it before. It's a commercial where the, the old lady, she's like, help, I'm falling and I can't get up. First thing I'm thinking, why don't the cameraman help her? He right there. The Fusion Singles Ministry for those age 36 and older will be hosting the More Than Funny virtual comedy show event with comedian Michael Jr. taking place Saturday, December 11th in the Overcoming by Faith community room. Masks are required and this invitation is for those who are vaccinated. They are also asking that you bring a toiletry item for their outreach collection for the Old Savannah City Mission. Calling all AIM teens, middle and high schoolers. It's time for your AIM Youth Christmas Party, taking place at the Fun Zone located in Polar, Georgia, December 17th from 7 until 9 p.m. The cost is $20. Get ready for lots of fun from go-karts to mini golf and so much more. OBF Kids, let's celebrate with your Happy Birthday Jesus Party. This will take place on two different dates. So first, we'll see you in person during our drive-in service on December 5th, and we'll have another Happy Birthday Jesus Party virtually December 19th during our 9 and 11 a.m. services. Season's greetings from Overcoming by Faith Ministries. At this time, we would like to acknowledge all first-time guests. Welcome to Overcoming by Faith's online services. We are so excited that you have decided to spend some of your holiday season with us. All right, Overcoming by Faith family, you know what time it is. Let's welcome all of our brand new guests by sending them different types of emojis to make them feel right at home. If you are a first-time guest and would like more information about our ministry, please follow the link provided to you by your streaming host or text the number on your screen. We would also like to send you a first-time visitor's gift either digitally or in the mail. Thank you for joining us and we pray that you are blessed by today's service. Well, glad you're with us. I hope you're being blessed by today's service. You know, I love the fact that we're able to bring you this digital service. I love the fact that we can connect together right here. And some of you are in your home, job. Some of you are all over the place watching on demand, but wherever you're watching it, thank you for being with us. I like the fact that we are trying this three things, three one, three digital services and one live service, which will start in just a little bit. Uh, we'll have one at 11 o'clock today. If you are out here at the property on first Sunday, every first Sunday at 11 a.m., we have the drive-in services for those who'd like to stay in their cars. It's comfortable and you have a nice system where you can tune in on your radio and listen. Hundreds come out to it every first Sunday. I hope you join them. I also want to say thousands of you over the month watch us online. Thank you for being here. We have a church that does it. We're doing indoor a little bit when it's safe with kids. We got it all spaced out for the little children for children and that's in person at 11 o'clock on Sundays. And we're having special events. We're having more small groups, more of everything. And we're going to slide our way back to some in-person gatherings more as the months go by and it's more safe. We are committed to making sure you're safe and we're making sure that we have fun things for us to gather around because we're going to be a church that gathers in person and online. So I'll see you hopefully today at our first Sunday service at 11 a.m. And it is a different sermon, by the way. It's not the same one. And it's really cool. It's a two-part series I did uh, this call last time we talked about. Uh, I did it. This time we talk about uh, they did it. That's right. Other people did it. You didn't do it. They brought terror in your life like dragons. They came in and breathed fire all over your life. And what do you do? How do you recover from that? But that is at the 11 a.m. service. But right now we're here in our digital format. And I want to thank you again for being with us. I want to pray for our offering. We want to receive our offering now. Your presence means so much to us. And we're really, really glad. So let me pray for your prosperity and let you uh, and let you have an opportunity to join us in supporting our ministry. Father, I thank you for those who give and those who support. I thank you for the opportunity 
that's provided for them. I thank you for meeting every need, allowing us to touch so many lives in so many ways. We thank you for the organizations we're able to support. We thank you for the thousands of dollars we're able to give out of our ministry to help the lives of others be better, both in schools and in just the community in so many ways. Thank you for full-time staff. Thank you for facilities, the things that we have that allow us to touch lives. I give you all the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I just really, really like our church. I love the fact that we're able to make a difference in a real way. And so if you want to give, you want to be a part of that, I'll feel free to join us. Uh, it's a simple way you can give if you'd like. Uh, your tithes and offerings, you can simply uh, feel free to use uh, the website as a place to go. The Overcoming by Faith Ministries website is phenomenal. Overcomingbyfaith.org has all these incredible uh, tools for you. They're all free. Tells you when events are coming up, when we're gathering together. You can also go back and watch all the sermons for free. It's all free. The notes are there as well and just all kinds of wonderful little tools. And that's one way if you want to give, there's a give option right there on the website. You also can use, uh, if you'd like, the text to give option. I mention it every week because there are new people who haven't done it before. You program your device one time and you can give that way. And it's just a simple way to give. A uh, third way is you can mail it in. You can simply take the P.O. box there that's in front of you and mail in your offering. And you can put that in your bill pay every month and you can give that way. You can also use, I always say it, the big fanfare, the app. The app is cool because thousands of people have downloaded the app. You can put it on your phone. You can give right there on your device. It's really easy, really simple. Plus the sermons are there. And I didn't mention again, I always mention the kids programs are there. We have two new ones we produce every week. We edit those together for you and our kids can watch them. It's real elementary school ages and below. Plus of course we have other events for older kids at different times. We are making a big push to expand our digital outreach. We wanna make sure that you can reach us wherever you are. And for many of our members, which is really amazing, Many of them have moved to other states to take other jobs, but they stay with us because they can. They still are connected and we want to make sure we expand that connection. So having said all that, thank you for what you will give. Thank you for being a part of us. And I want to encourage you to do something. Some of you have uh, expressed needs and I get these prayer requests. You can email me directly at, at pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. That's pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org for any prayer requests you have regarding your life, things that are going on, and I'd be glad to pray for you. That's pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. And I do respond and I scare people when I do because I do want to stay in touch and, and pray for you. Thank you for being with us today. We got a treat for you next and then I'll come back and share a message with you today. I'm talking about celebration. That's right, today, everybody needs to learn the power of celebration. Every year, I try to answer one question. This question for this year is, how do you live in a new world? Well, one thing you need to learn to do, learn how to celebrate. And I want to show you in this month's study how to do that. It's going to be a great study. Is Jesus against Christmas? What do you think about Santa Claus? What does it say about all that? And how did all this start? Did it all start because of non-Christian people who don't love God? Or was it church folks? You're going to be surprised today. Church people was behind a lot of this celebration stuff we got. And I'll tell you more about that after this special gift. Enjoy this gift you're going to hear. And I'll come right back and we will learn together. See you in just a minute. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Can we do that right here? This is a perfect time to bless the Lord. So God, we lift up your name. We honor your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. The song says this. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel. God, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. That's my prayer. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Can somebody bless him right there? God, we come to give you glory. Let's do it together. Say, I will bless, say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Say, and his praises. And his praises. What will they be? Continue Say, no matter what I see, no what I see or what how I feel. I feel, say, as long as I'm breathing, as if as you got air in your lungs, oh, yes, come on, let's do it. I'll bless oh, the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. I'll bless the Lord. Say, oh, magnify, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his, his name. Let's do it together. together. Say, let's lay down let's our lay ground. Down I lift up his name. Hey, we're going to do it together. So let's do it. Let's 
Let's do it together. So right here's a perfect opportunity for you go, to go ahead and give God the best praise you can give him. We're going to do it again, all right? Let's do it. Say, I will bless. Say, I, I will, will bless the Lord at all times. Say, and his praises. And his praises. Yeah. Shall continually be in my Say, no matter what I no see. No matter what I see. Or oh, how I feel. As long as I'm breathing, as as I'm breathing you get this oh, air guy. Yes, hey, oh, I will bless the Lord. Yeah. Oh, magnify. We're doing this thing together this morning. Let us exalt his name together. Let's lay down and lift up his name. Y'all ready? One more time. Say, oh, magnify, oh, magnify the Lord. I feel like praising him. Let us exalt his Let name. Exalt his together. Name. together. Let's lay down our down And lift up his name. That's right. We all do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Right. Come on, let's go. Woo! Shout it. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. I hope you're praising God at home. Come on. Let's do it again. Let's do it together. Oh, 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 oh. Let's do it again. Let's do it together. Here's why we're praising God today. Here's the truth right here. Hey, because you've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Is that your testimony this morning? Say, so you've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than I've been to myself. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. We're gonna split it up right here. Let's say, you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. That's why I give you glory. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. That's why I lift you up. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Nobody like you nowhere. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Here's how I know it. Because I should have been dead. I should have been dead. But you've been, but you've been, been better than good to me. Is that your testimony right here? Say it again. Say, should have lost my mind. Should have lost my yeah. mind. Yeah. You've been better than good to me. I'm going to let you testify one more time. Type it in the comments. Hey, say, I should have been dead. I should have been dead. Oh, yeah. You've been better than good When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done. Hey, should have lost my mind. Should have lost my mind. Yeah. You've been better than good to me. Y'all ready? We got to give God a praise right here. Shout it. Let's go. Say, say you've been better than good. You've been better than good Say, to me. better than good. You've been better than good. Nobody like you, God. Nobody like you, God. So you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good. So you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. I feel like praising him right here. You've been better than good. Oh, nobody like you know where you've been better. Oh, nobody like you know where you've been better. You've been better than good to me. I gotta testify one more time. I should've been dead. I should've been dead. But you've been, you've been better than good to me. Woo, I feel that thing right here. Shout it one more time. Should've lost my mind. Should've lost my mind. Yeah. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Should've lost my mind. Should've lost my mind. Let's take this thing home right here. Put your hands on it right here. Shout it. So you've been better than good. 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 Everybody clap your better, better. Oh, you've been better, better. God, you've been better, better, yeah. I need you to send up a praise that says, God, I thank you for being better than good. Be hey, better than good. <laughs> better than good. 
better to me than I've been to myself. God, we bless you this morning. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hi, it's Pastor Rick. Glad you're back. Listen, I'm excited about today's study. I'm excited about this entire month because I love the holidays. I'm a big, big Christmas person. Uh, I, I dance a lot. I, I jump around a lot. I'm really excitable because I love the season. And um, I will be wearing my jacket. I love red and I love the whole look of Christmas. And uh, this is especially good for me because this is the month, this is the season when Dan and I celebrate two things. One is my, my marriage, which was 41 years ago. Dan and I got married on December 17, 1980, and it was phenomenal. I'm so happy. Then a the year later, exactly to the day, I became the pastor of Overcoming by Faith. Uh, they were, uh, Dan was in the hallway in the lobby waiting for them to pray me in, and I became the pastor. So I celebrate on the same day, uh, 40 years of pastoring and 41 years of marriage. So this is a great season, and I'm honored to have been your pastor. Uh, those of you who are members of our church were honored, and those of you I've been able to touch through this role as a pastor, God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to be in your life. Now, having said that, uh, if, if you uh, are really, 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 really excited uh, about God's goodness in your life, like I'm about mine, you'll love the sermon because this sermon is about celebration. And so I want to pray. Normally, we have already prayed, but I want to pray now. Father, I pray for us and I pray for this message. I pray that what we talk about today will liberate, lift, and inspire people to be happy about who they are and about their life and to find the joy and celebration in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe the Bible does not support being sad about celebration. I believe the Bible supports being happy about celebration. And as we, as we look at a world that's going through a whole lot of different phases, a lot of different seasons, it's really important for us to focus our attention and make sure we stay in the right space in our heads. Because there's so many reasons to be depressed, so many reasons to be down, but I want to give you some reason to be happy. But before I do that, I want to go back over the year because this is the last month, the last time that we're going to be uh, in, uh, dealing with this particular annual theme. Um, and so I want to make sure you know what the theme was. And then I want to recount what we talked about so far this year, just really briefly. First of all, the theme for the year is how do you live in a new world? That was the question that I asked. Every year I try to answer, answer, answer one question. And so how do you live in a new world? What do you do to live in this new world? How do you process? How do you manage? And there are specific things that I believe you had to do. And so I gave you uh, a, a, a list of 12 different, well, at least it's more like 11 topics because one was two parts. But let me list them for you again. Put them on the screen so you can see them. And remember what we talked about all year. This is so important. Because again, most people don't remember everything you say. But if I pose this one question a year, then you can say, he's going to tell me all year how to live in a world that's changed like this. Here's the first thing I said to do. Allow yourself to be trained. That's the first series we did. Training is all important if you're going to survive in a new world. You have to retrain yourself. Number two, I talked about managing your resources. You have to manage your money. Not just your money, your time, your health, all those resources that God has given you. You have to learn how to manage them. Thirdly, you have to learn how to manage your expectations. We did a whole series on expectations, and all these are free. You can go online and watch all of them. They're all on the app, especially. If you want to just go online, you can check out all of them. Manage your expectations. You can't expect everything. You have to learn how to adjust to change and adjust your expectations. That's why some of you don't like marriage, you don't like your job, you don't like a lot of things because you expected something and when you got there it was different. And fourthly, we talked about you have to know the truth. Now I'm going to talk about that in the coming year. As a matter of fact, we'll revisit that topic. So we can look forward to that. I have a whole series of things I'm going to talk about next year. And then number five, we talked about making good investments. So if you're going to live in a new world, you got to be trained, you got to watch your resources, you got to watch your expectations, <clears throat> excuse me, you got to know the truth and you have to make good investments. If you make bad investments, you won't get to where you want to be. My question for Ricky Temple is, am I investing my time in the right things, the right programs, the right, the right um, investments, the right uh, programs? Am I just investing to invest? And if I'm not careful and if I don't know how to look at this and say, this doesn't get me what I want, 
spending time watching this much television is not a good investment if I'm trying to learn. If I'm a student trying to graduate and I'm investing all my time with my friends, that's not gonna get me a degree. How you make investments, really important series. Then we talked about understanding the God you love. If you're gonna live in this new world, you need to understand God. And I went through a, a, a series of conversations about what God's like and you need to be clear. If you understand the God you love, you, you're gonna be able to function in the world better. And number six, we talked about, number seven rather, being mature. So maturity was important. We talked about that for two months. Being mature and this whole conversation of growing up and not being a child, not be tossed to and fro by everything that people throw at you. Then we talked about if you want to live in this new world, you got to be confident in the work. You have to be confident and you have to do the work. You can't just in this world say, I'm, I'm, God's going to work it out for me. OK, that's fine. Be confident. That's important. But you have to do the work. I often tell people, if, if you don't give God something to work with, there's no way you can be blessed. You can pray for money, blessings, opportunity, all you want. But if you don't invest and do the work, you have to be confident and do the work. And then we talked about making good decisions. And that's important. In this new world we live in, you've got to make decisions that are important. And I gave you a formula for making decisions. You've got to learn how to map things out, if you remember. And I said, once you map it out, then you have to predict, OK, for example, I am planning on going from here to New York. If I'm going to New York and I have a half a tank of gas, I can predict that that is not going to work, not from where I'm living. So if I'm in Georgia trying to get to New York, I need more than a half a tank of gas. So you lay out on the map how much gas you need and you tell the truth. I'm going to need maybe a couple of tanks of gas. So if I don't have but a half a tank of gas, I can predict then I'm not going to I'm not going to make it. So I got to make another decision. So there is a mapping phase where you lay out the facts. There is a predicting phase where you analyze those facts. And then there is a phase where you say, OK, I need to make a new decision. For some of you, that whole study is worth you going back and listening to. Because for some of you, the problem is you have not made good decisions. And it would be really important for you to start mapping honestly. Tell yourself the truth. If I keep cussing my wife out like this, if I keep cussing myself, my, my boss out, if I keep being late, what do you predict will happen? You'll lose your job. And if you lose your job, that's not a healthy thing. So make a new decision. Start getting up earlier. Start preparing yourself. So we did a whole series on that, and we used the book Farsighted by Stephen Johnson as a guide for that three, three templated example I just gave you. I thought it was brilliantly put together. And so you can get the book Farsighted. You can read about that, but we talked about that a lot. Also, we talked about in uh, our, our last series uh, before this one is called What Works and What Doesn't Work. And here's what we talked about. Change what does not work. How do you live in a world? You change what doesn't work. If it doesn't work, and I said to you, division doesn't work, unity does. And we spent a good bit of time talking about the importance of unity, the importance of not being a person who's divided and how dangerous that is for our country. I'm going to say, no matter what any politician tells you, no matter what anybody says to you, if you allow I'm divided, you're, Jesus said it. He said, a, a family, a house divided against itself cannot stand, cannot stand. You're going to fail. That is what we talked about this year. And the final sermon in the series this year is called Celebration. If you want to make it, if you want to know how to live in a new world, you have to learn what to celebrate, learn how to celebrate. And if you learn how to do that, if you learn how to embrace the moment, enjoy the life you have, enjoy what you have, not what you want, learning how to look at your life and say, what I have, I'll make work for now. I'll work for more, but I'll celebrate what I have. And that's what we'll talk about today. And there are three things that you should learn to celebrate that we're going to study. So I hope the whole year has been helpful to you. We close out the year with three final things I want you to think about. Learn what to celebrate. That's today. Then we're going to talk about learning to celebrate your fruitfulness. And we're going to talk about learning to celebrate the authority you've been given. I have been given a certain amount of authority. I have been given a certain amount of fruitfulness. I have a certain amount of resources in my life. I have learned, I have a life that I need to learn how to celebrate. Genesis chapter one is going to take us on a journey in a moment that will show us some interesting principles that will be helpful in putting these three things together. Today, though, I want to talk about celebration, and I want to talk about why I think some people struggle with it. 
It is my opinion, it is my conviction, and I think it's buried out in life and buried out even in Scripture, that a lot of people struggle with this season of the holidays because they don't know how to celebrate. They have been somehow convinced that Jesus really isn't about you being happy or celebrating. He's really only about you celebrating him. He's kind of like insecure. And so if you don't mention his name in every song, and if you don't mention his name in every word, and if you don't say, thank you, Jesus, God bless, hallelujah, if you don't say that in every sentence, that somehow he becomes insecure and he says, you're not giving me glory, you're not honoring me. And so there's this pressure, if you're not careful, to celebrate. There's this pressure to make, make God happy because he gets upset. He's a jealous God. You know, we take that text out of context and say, you know, he really gets nervous. That is so far from the truth. That is not what this is about at all. As a matter of fact, Paul, Paul said something that was powerful. In Romans chapter 14, verse 15, here's what he said. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them shall be fully convinced in their own mind. I, I, um, I have listened for years to people throw off on Christmas, throw off on the holidays, and say things like, ah, oh, you know, you just need to just serve Jesus. You're taking Christ out of Christmas. You're taking Christ out of Christmas. That's what I don't like about Christmas, because there's not enough Jesus in Christmas, everybody. You need to say Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus in the sun goes down. And if you don't say Jesus, he said, if you can shame the name me before men, I'll be shamed the name you before my Father in heaven. You need to take a breath. That, that, that I understand what you're trying to say, but our God's not insecure. My kids don't have to go around saying, Daddy, 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 Daddy. My daddy did that. My daddy gave me that. My daddy, no, Ricky Temple Sr. gave me that. My, they don't have to do that. I mean, there is, a, there is a place to honor me, but there is something about the way we portray Christ as this insecure person who's against gift giving, and he's against dancing, he's against new celebration. That somehow it's, it's almost like he, you, you, the way they portray Jesus is, all right, this right here is Christ's birthday, this season. And the only thing that matters is not the gifts. It's just, it's just celebrating him. <laughs> December 25th is not Christ's birthday. Now, I know that for some of you, that's a moment you need to pause and pray and talk to God and say, God, He's preaching blasphemous words, but no, I'm telling the truth. It's not. That's not the day Christ was born. It's not. It, it probably, most scholars believe, was sometime in the spring. But let me just say, here's how we got to December 25th. Some Christians, believers, got together, and they were noticing that everybody was celebrating something called the winter solstice. Now, I want to put something on the screen. I want you to just listen to what this is. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a lesson, okay, a little history lesson. More, I'm going to say more on the screen than I normally would, but I want to take you through some stuff so you can understand, because here's what's important. You can't celebrate if you don't understand. If you don't understand history, if you get lost and you don't realize how all this started, you're going to get confused. And what you're going to discover in this little brief history lesson I'm going to give you is how much church people created a lot of this, some Santa Claus, to the, to the night before Christmas, a lot of that stuff was done by us, including the establishment of Christmas as the day to celebrate the birth of Christ, which is fine. Let me make sure you're clear. Romans 14, 5 says, one person considers one day more sacred than another, another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. You can celebrate any day you want. You can say, you know, you want to celebrate it on the 29th. God wouldn't care. Paul says this, the issue is you can make the decision to, to honor God. It's like, I want to give God an honorable mention on the 25th of December celebrating his birth. Fine. Doesn't bother him. Doesn't bother him at all. That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 14, verse 5. So having said that, let me, if I can, put this on the screen. And this is important for you to understand. Some don't understand. This is why I think some can't celebrate, because they don't understand that some holiday celebrations was designed, watch this now, to compete with secular holidays. Some secular holidays were, were, were created and we were competing with those. 
So the Christian leaders decided what they would do is they would create their own holiday celebration. So here we go. Read this on the screen with me. The winter solstice is the shortest day and longest night of the year in the northern hemisphere. It takes place between December 20th and December, and December 23rd. Cultures around the world have long held feast and celebrated holidays around the winter solstice. Fire and lights are traditional symbols of celebrations held on the darkest day of the year. Pause right there. Please be clear, that's what they were competing against because everybody was celebrating the winter solstice, the longest day of the year, and it was between December 20th and December 23rd. So watch this now. Next thing I want you to read with me on the screen. By holding Christmas at the same time as traditional winter solstice festivals, church leaders increased the chances that Christmas would be popularly embraced but gave up the ability to dictate how it was celebrated. By the Middle Ages, that's the 5th through the 15th century, Christianity had for the most part replaced pagan religion on Christmas. Believers attended church, then they celebrated raucously in a drunken carnival-like atmosphere similar to today's Mardi Gras. It migrated to like a Mardi Gras from the 5th century on to the 15th. That's what they did, celebrate Christmas. Now, the source for all of this, by the way, is uh, on our website. If you, if you download the notes, uh, the, the whole quote is, is drawn from a history source that you would, uh, could read more about. So if you want to see where the source is, just click on and you can find it. It's right there in front of you. Now, watch this. One more thing I want to read. Now, I want you to hear this. This is so important. It's so important. In the 17th century, a wave of religious reform changed the way Christians what was, Christianity was, Christmas was celebrated in Europe. When a guy named Oliver Cromwell, and they're going to put his picture up for you, Oliver Cromwell and his Puritan forces took over England in 1645. 45, can I see? Yes, 45. They vowed to rid England of the decadence and as part of their effort canceled Christmas. By popular demand, Charles II was restored uh, to the throne and with him came the return of the popular holiday. So, I want you to see. It was created. It was celebrated. Then this guy comes around. He's like a bah humbug kind of guy, Oliver Cromwell. And Oliver Cromwell says, stop all this Mardi Gras stuff and drinking. It's going to be about Jesus. God. Okay, good. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not against the stopping the drunkard part. Okay. But I want you to notice that's the history of it, the true history of it. And I, I want to make sure that you, you're right there. You can, like I said, I, I, put, I, I put the uh, source right there for you on the screen so you can go look it up yourself. Just, it's, 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 it's an amazing truth. Let me read one more thing to you. Now watch this. <laughs> this is important because I, I think um, the whole St. Nicholas thing, you know, the Santa Claus and all that kind of stuff, and a lot of that was fed by another guy who was a preacher, by the way, okay? And I find it fascinating that he had this incredible idea. So let me talk a little bit more about Christmas, and I want to put this on the screen for you to read. You ready? Hang with me. The Pilgrims, English uh, separatists that came to America in 1620, were even more orthodox in their Puritan beliefs than Cromwell. Remember that guy I showed you? As a result, Christmas was not a holiday on, er, on, in early America from 1659 to 1681. The celebration of Christmas was actually outlawed in Boston. Anyone exhibiting the Christmas spirit was fined five shillings. By contrast, in Jamestown settlement, Captain John Smith reported that Christmas was enjoyed by all. So I want you to see there's this constant historical fight. Some say, yes, the Christmas, and some say, bah, humbug the Christmas. Some say, some more orthodox religious people say, we're going to celebrate Christ, and they were really serious about it, right? And then some decided, okay, this is pretty good. So some took it another step. And I want to talk about one more guy, and I promise, hang with me, this is important, okay? Because now I want to bring in this conversation about Santa Claus. Now, for some of you, I know that Santa Claus is a sacred conversation. I was a devout believer in Santa Claus for many years. I was. I really was. The legend of Santa Claus, let me put this on the screen for you. The legend of Santa Claus can be traced back to a monk named St. Nicholas. He was a preacher 
who was born in Turkey around 280 A.D. St. Nicholas gave away all of his inherited wealth and traveled the countryside helping the poor and sick, becoming known as the protector of children and sailors. St. Nicholas first entered American popular culture in the 18th, late 18th century in New York. When Dutch families gathered to honor the anniversary of the death of St. Nicholas, Dutch for St. Nicholas or Center Claus, Ah, that's how they used to say it, Santa Claus, for short. And it evolved to be called Santa Claus. And that's where the name came from. So, again, I want you to see, that's how it happened. Now, you may go, wait a minute, wait. Yeah, he was a preacher, dude. St. Nick, they were celebrating this guy who gave away his wealth, and he was giving and helping children. So then it migrated to another level. And this is my last read from the screen. So hang with me today, please. Here's another one. Some don't understand the origin of the holiday, and they, they are struggling with celebrating it because they put it in this place that just isn't historically true. Here's my last read. Hang with me. In 1822, Episcopal minister, I'm going to put his picture up for you, Clant, Clement Clark Moore, wrote a Christmas poem called An Account of a Visit from St. Nicholas, more popularly known by his first line, "'Twas the night before Christmas. The poem depicted Santa Claus as a jolly man who flies from home to home on a sled driven by reindeer and delivering toys, started by a preacher. Just want to say, Episcopal minister Clement Clark Moore. Now, again, I put stuff on the screen, and if you want to download the notes, you can see where all these sources come from, and you can understand it. As I read this stuff to you, I read it because it helps you see historically how it fit. What does that have to do with anything? What kind of sermon is this talking about history? What in the world? Well, because because you're preaching against stuff and acting as if we had nothing to do with creating some of these. Here's a big word. You ready? Hyperbolic. Examples, hyperbole, you've heard of that before. Hyperbole means to exaggerate. We created some of this around fables and people and preachers and stories, and it evolved and became all kinds of things. This is fascinating. You ought to study about how Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer came into being. It's, you know, anyway, it's from an advertisement, by the way, uh, from a department store. But let's get past all that and say this. Here's the bottom line. You decide I want to celebrate. God says go for it. No, he's not, he's not, no more than he's mad about Bugs Bunny. He's not mad about the guy in the red suit. I'll leave it there. I mean, I don't think we need to get all hyped up and get lost in that and preach. And I believe Jesus and the Lord said and, and going to hell if you give a gift. On, let's then stop all that. Celebrate. It's okay as long as you know who he is. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of like David. David said, you know, I just learned in Psalm 139, I learned to celebrate because I have been wonderfully, fearfully, and wonderfully made. And I look at the works, he says, and, and the wonderful things that God has done, and I just want to celebrate because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And then he says, not only am I fearfully and wonderfully made, that's why I celebrate, but I celebrate because Psalm 139, David says in verse 16, because he says, all my days are ordained for me, and written in a book. God's like that parent writing down, oh, did you see him do that? You, you ever seen the parents taking pictures? Oh, yeah, look at, look at, look at, look at Ricky. He's preaching good today. Oh, look at, look at him. He's, oh, boy, he's, he's, he's working. You know, you know how proud you are of your kids? God wants you happy. Celebrate. Stop spending all your time preaching against and arguing with people about holidays. Listen, you don't want to celebrate. Please go to the left, step over to the side. All the rest of us who choose to be happy, who choose to party and worship God and, and find joy in it, and who want to enjoy the fruitfulness. We want to enjoy the things that God has given us and, and still honor God. Let us alone. I hope you got that. I know it's, it's a lot of history. Pastor Rick, I felt like I was in the history class. I know, I feel you. But the problem is, you're arguing about something you don't need to be arguing about. Just go be happy. I am. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to find some space to dance this holiday season. 
It's going to be a sight to see. And some of you better listen. Don't, you, don't make any jokes. I'm telling you, I am going to celebrate my life every day I can. My wife, my life. And you know why? A lot of you during this season, it's sad for you because you've lost people. And, and one of the regrets some of you have, have is because you didn't celebrate enough when they were alive. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Celebrate now while you can. Dance while you can. Give a gift while you can. It may not be a big gift. It could be a card, a call, a smile, a biscuit, something. Be happy. Well, Pastor Rick, I just can't be happy because I lost my mama. Is that why your mama raised you? So you can be sad when it's Christmas? I lost my daddy. Is that why he raised you? My brother died. Your brother wants you to be sad during Christmas, holidays. That's what they tell you? Is that what you want your kids to do? Do you sit all your kids down and say, all right, when I die, I want everybody to be sad on the holidays, okay? There'll be no happiness because I'm dead. Everybody's, everybody's got to cry. Cry all day, cry all night and say my name, Ricky. That's the Ricky. <laughs> I know, Lord have mercy. No, no, absolutely not. Celebrate their life by living your life. Let me say it again. Celebrate your life. Celebrate their life by living yours. Now, I'm about to pray. Next week, we're going to talk about fruitfulness. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray. Oh, God, I pray for fruitfulness and blessing in our lives. I pray for you to minister healing to people today. Let them feel your presence. Let them feel your love. And let them feel your healing touch. And let them say, you know what? That man is right. It's time for me to celebrate. Some need to get a treat. Some need to just get a smile. I don't know what they need to do, but whatever it is, I release them in Jesus' name to be happy and to celebrate their life. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, somebody told me once, they said, Pastor Ricky, I could celebrate. I'm going to throw this in real quick as a bonus. But I'm the last one. Everybody's died in my family. I'm the only one. You know, whenever you go to battle, if you are the last one, the person you put behind you is the one you trust the most, the rear guard. Some of you that are just you're the last one, you're the, you're the rear guard. They trusted you. God trusted you to pull up the rear, protect the backside, the part they can't see. And you're that last one. Celebrate that. Celebrate that. And you go home when it's your time, knowing you did your part. And when you walk into heaven's gates, I believe they'll all be high five and you say, you go, girl. You go, boy. You know, you pulled up the rear, man. We're waiting on you. We knew you was coming any minute now. We're, we're proud of you. Celebrate it that way. See the good in this. Go have a good day. Demand that you have a good day. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, this is going to be a good day. My time is so up. I got to go. I hope you were helped today. I hope it lifted your spirit. I pray, God, for those today who heard this message. May it give them hope. And those who have heard it and said, you know, he's right. I need to celebrate, but I also need to remember God. Maybe in your life, maybe in my life, you'd say, Lord, I have forgotten you. And I want to, in this celebration season, invite you back into my life. May this be that moment for them in Jesus' name. Hey, listen, if that prayer works for you, find yourself a good Bible-believing church, a place where you can grow. If you want to know more about serving Jesus and starting your life, you can touch that screen. If you're watching right now where you have that option, touch that screen where it says, I raise my hand, which means, Pastor Ray, I prayed the prayer and I realized I need God in my life. And I want you to send me something to help me start my life with Jesus. Please feel free to touch that or either email me, pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. That's pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. And we'll send you something to help you start your life with Christ. And if not, just tell somebody, get around some people and start growing in your walk with God. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And let me just say this as we close and go home today. This is our first Sunday. When it's first Sunday, I want you to make sure you come out and be with us for our first Sunday service. Our first Sunday service is going to be amazing. I have a special word for you you don't want to miss. It's not the same sermon. It's at 11 o'clock and it's live. You drive your car in. It's a drive-in service. And you can sit in your car. It's nice and safe. 
and you can listen to our special message, special music. It's really cool. We're going to have some outdoor concerts, some real special things that's going to come up. So stay tuned, stay in touch. I'll see you next time. My name is Pastor Rick. It's been a blast, been fun. Go celebrate. Get your dancing shoes on. I'm about to get stepping. I'll see you, I'll see you next time as we talk about fruitfulness. Is it okay to give a gift? Yeah. Is it okay to have some stuff? Oh, you, you don't want to miss it. I got things to talk about. See you next week. Bye-bye. You can find today's message later today at overcomingbyfaith.org. Select Watch On Demand, the Overcoming By Faith app. Also, find a link of the message on all OBF social media platforms. Overcoming By Faith Ministries will be hosting another COVID vaccination clinic. Shots will be administered by CORE, Community Organized Relief Effort, providing vaccinations of Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer. This event is free and open to the public taking place Friday, December 10th from 12 p.m. until 5 p.m. in the Overcoming by Faith Sanctuary. Also, if you can't make this date, the next opportunity will be January 7th from 12 until 5 p.m. I'm watching TV and this commercial came on. You've seen it before. It's a commercial where the, the old lady, she's like, help, I'm falling and I can't get up. First thing I'm thinking, why don't the cameraman help her? He right there. The Fusion Singles Ministry, for those age 36 and older, will be hosting the More Than Funny virtual comedy show event with comedian Michael Jr., taking place Saturday, December 11th in the Overcoming Their Faith community room. Masks are required, and this invitation is for those who are vaccinated. They are also asking that you bring a toiletry item for their outreach collection for the Old Savannah City Mission. Calling all AIM teens, middle and high schoolers. It's time for your AIM Youth Christmas Party, taking place at the Fun Zone located in Polar, Georgia, December 17th from 7 until 9 p.m. The cost is $20. Get ready for lots of fun from goat carts to mini golf and so much more. OBF Kids, let's celebrate with your Happy Birthday Jesus Party. This will take place on two different dates. So first, we'll see you in person during our drive-in service on December 5th, and we'll have another Happy Birthday Jesus Party virtually December 19th during our 9 and 11 a.m. services.